Hello everyone, welcome. It's uh, Reverend Paul again here uh, for our collective worship. And it's wonderful to be amongst you again, even in this, uh, this video format, as we come together to give thanks to God for the harvest. Let's begin our collective worship with the lighting of our candle. And we light the candle to remind us that God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit is here amongst us. We always need to remember that he is always with us. But lighting the candle just reminds us. It's a sign, it's a symbol to point to God's presence here with us during our time of collective worship. So today we're going to be thinking about harvest and how we can give thanks to God. And there are many, many people who help in providing the food that we eat, the food that ends up on our tables, whether it's at school or at home, or if we go out and eat somewhere else um, in a restaurant or a cafe. There are lots and lots of people who are involved in that whole process and we come here today to give thanks for them and also to give thanks to God for the harvest that we can enjoy. But there are many people that would say, well, it's harvest, so what? Not many people today get to see the work in the fields that we do all around us. The regular cycle of, of plowing, of sowing, of growing, of harvesting, that, that we see all around us in our community, surrounding our homes, our villages, our schools. Many people live in big towns or cities and they don't experience what we do and have that cycle and that rhythm of the seasons and the harvest. So for many people, they ask, well, what's so special about harvest? When we can, we can just go to the shops and we can buy whatever we want at whatever time of year. We just take it off the shelves or take it out of the freezer, put it in our trolleys and we can take it home. So what's so special about the harvest? Some people say, well, why make a fuss of harvest? It's nothing big, it's nothing special. It doesn't mean anything to me, really. And others are saying that we should be thankful all the year round. So why should we have one time in the year when we're thankful for the food that we eat? However, I think that God has some particular things to teach us about harvest, some important gospel truths. So let's have a think about those now. I think one of the first things that God teaches us through the harvest is to be patient. To be patient. Because it takes time. It takes time for the ground to be ploughed, to be weeded, to be prepared for the seeds to be sown. And we can see in the window behind me here, the person on the left with the little basket over his shoulder is sowing the seeds. The ground has been prepared and he is sowing the seeds. Then those seeds and that ground, it needs regular care and attention. Lots of weeding and tending. It needs sunshine and rain in order for those seeds to grow. And then they need to be harvested. They need to be dug up cut or picked. They need to be transported to the farm for further washing and packing and storing. They're then sent to the factory for processing, then sent to the shops for selling, and then taken home to cook and to eat. And all of this takes time. In our instant world where we want everything by yesterday, we need to learn that the best gifts take time. Because God's ways aren't often instant. 
God will answer our prayers. God will work out his plan for us, even though some things sometimes have to be messy and confusing for a time because we have to wait. So harvest teaches us about being patient. The second thing that I think harvest teaches us is about prayer. Now we humans, we can do such a lot to ensure that we have sufficient food to eat. Science is great and has achieved wonderful things over the years to help feed more people more effectively. But it is God that causes things to grow. And our prayers ask God to help bring in a, a good and healthy harvest with food enough for everyone in our world. And the amazing thing is that God provides enough for everyone in our world. It's just that some choose not to share what they have or waste what they have in plenty. So prayer is about staying on the lookout, keeping our eyes on what God is doing, staying close to him. God is always at work. And if we listen carefully, and if we watch closely, he will share the miracle of what he's doing with us. So harvest teaches us the importance of prayer. And finally, harvest, I believe, teaches us to live our lives following the pattern and the example of Jesus. In order for us to enjoy a good harvest and for the plants to grow, the seed has to be buried in the ground before it can be transformed into something miraculous. We've already seen the man on this side of the window here sowing the seeds. And on the other side of the window, there's a woman there who's collecting in the harvest. She's got the, the wheat or the corn bundled together. And in the middle of the window, we have Jesus. Jesus, the person who we should follow. His example, his way of living. Because only when that seed is buried in the ground, and it is fed and watered and nurtured by the earth, and God then causes it to grow, does that little tiny seed blossom into something miraculous, into a plant that eventually we can eat. And the only way for a harvest of good news for everyone is to go the Jesus way, of burying all those things in the ground that aren't, we aren't doing in the way that Jesus expects of us. Things like unloving or unkind thoughts, or nasty words or horrible actions. They're the things that need to be buried in the ground in order for them to be rebirthed and transformed into miraculous new life. Jesus taught this and Jesus did this and he can help us go the same way and produce a wonderful and rich harvest for him. So harvest teaches us about living our lives the Jesus way of burying all those things that are not what Jesus expects of us. So let's return to the question that I started with when people sometimes say, it's harvest, so what? Well, God has some special things to teach us, as I've already mentioned, about patience, about prayer, about following Jesus. So maybe we should change the question slightly to, it's harvest, so what? Well, perhaps this harvest we can sow patience. We can sow prayer. And we can sow a life patterned on Jesus. And I'd like to encourage you to follow Jesus' example. 
And the next time that you hear yourself or someone else asking, it's harvest, so what? You can share with them the need to sow the seeds of patience, of prayer, and a life following Jesus. So let's pray. Father God, all good gifts come from you. You send the sunshine and the rain, and it is through your love and care that we can enjoy the harvest time. Thank you for providing so richly for our needs and help us to share the good things we have with those who have little or nothing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I hope that you're able to enjoy this wonderful time of harvest and uh, hopefully you're able to do some really wonderful harvest projects in school, maybe sing some harvest songs as well. Um, it's not what we would normally do. We'd normally be over in church and enjoying a harvest festival service in church, but um, times are, are challenging, so we have to do what we're able to do. So I hope you enjoy today. I hope you enjoy the harvest. And remember to keep looking around you as you move from place to place and you see the farmers out there in the fields, you see the fields changing constantly and remember those important things, sowing the seeds of patience, of prayer and a life following Jesus. Have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless you all. Goodbye.